Hi, I'm Marty Grimes with Santa Clara Valley Water District. Welcome to this month's episode of The People Behind Your Water. This month, naturally, we're gonna be focusing on water conservation and how you can help us get through this drought that we're in. It's a very serious drought. The governor has declared a drought emergency. So to help you, we have lined up some of our staff from our water conservation unit to talk about the many programs that they have available to help you. And we're gonna go out to a home and take a look at the WaterWise House Call Program, which is one of our, our best programs for you to learn how to save water both inside and outside the home. So stick around. So I'm here with Jerry De La Piedra, who's our Water Conservation Program Coordinator. Correct. I'm going to call you that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you've been in conservation as long as I've you've been in conservation as long as I've been at the district. How long have you been doing that job? I've been in water conservation since actually 1999. Started out as a student intern, and then I've just uh, been there ever since. Mm -hmm. And uh, is this your first drought that we're we're entering right now? Uh, no, I, you know, in 2007, it was dry. 2007 through 2011, it was dry. And, um, you know, it wasn't as bad as the 87 to 92 drought. And this one looks like it may be um, as bad as that. So, uh, but I have been through some dry periods before. Mm -hmm. So what is, what's your perspective on how, we're, how this community, how this county is going to make it through this drought? Well, the, this community or this county has been very good at responding to um, calls for, you know, short-term reductions. In the 87 through 92 drought, we went all the way up to 25% mandatory, and, and the, the community really responded. And then again in 2007 through 2011, um, it responded as well. And so we're we're expecting the community um, to respond again. Mm -hmm. And what kind of response do you expect? What what makes a difference? Uh, you know, the little things, um, everybody does their little part. They shorten their showers, they turn off the water when they're doing certain things, they reduce their landscaping irrigation. Um, you know, every, every little bit counts and it all adds up and it really, um, you know, when you add it all up, it really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Now, what about people who have already done everything they can? You hear from people like that, right? That, that say, I can't save anymore. I've already, my yard is very efficient. I am, you know, the kind of people that are already uh, putting their shower water into their toilets and all kinds of things. What do you t say to them? I, I would say, uh, you know, it's interesting to bring that up. Uh, a couple years ago, we had a Mercury News uh, reporter that contacted us and they said, you know, we want you to come out. It was during the 2007, 2009 drought. And they said, you know, we're already very efficient. We have all the high efficiency fixtures. Our landscape is all on drip. You know, we do an excellent job. You're not going to find anything. We're excellent. And they wanted to do a story on it. So we went out there, we sent out our technicians. I was out there myself and we found a whole bunch of things that they can improve on. And then she wrote a great story the next, the next week. And uh, it just shows you that even though you think you're doing really well, there's usually some more things you can do to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the uh, per capita water use and how has that changed in our county? Currently, it is about, um, if you include all the commercial and businesses and what they're using, it's about 143 gallons per person per day. Mm -hmm. uh, back in, before the 87 and 92 drought, so before the big drought, it was over 200. It was probably wow. 210, 215. Um, so we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot. We've, the district's made a lot of investments in water conservation, and the community itself has made a lot of invest, investments. So uh, we're using the water a lot more efficiently. In fact, if you look at water use over time, it's remained relatively flat over the last 25 years, despite a 25% uh, population increase. So we've done a good job. Yeah. Uh, but you've, you, do you have studies or evidence that there's a lot more big changes people can make? Are there still a lot of toilets and washers out there and, and landscapes that are wasting a lot of water? There, um, well, the thing with toilets is uh, it seems like every five years or so they become even more efficient. So, um, you know, start out with the big five gallon toilets into 3.5 gallons per flush, then down to 1.6 and down to 1.28. Now they're down to one and even lower than one. So it seems like technology keeps getting more efficient. Mm -hmm. Same with washing machines. 
Um, but where the big bang for the buck that's still that's still left out there is landscape. There's a lot of potential in landscape um, for savings. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the difference between long-term conservation that your pr program is is doing year all year long, wet year or dry year, Correct. and contrast that with what we need to do in a drought. Yeah, our long-term programs really focus on trying to make conservation a way of life. And we do that through our programs where we offer technical assistance, we offer rebates, we offer um, uh, advice. Um, we do the Waterwise House Call program, we have rebates for toilets and landscape, et cetera. So that's, that's sustained savings that we can count on year after year after year after year, and we know it's going to be in place. Um, and and you, you actually count those savings, you actually quantify those and you have goals for the future. What are the goals? Yeah, we track every device, every program, everything that we do, and it has a, a, a water savings number associated with it. And then we track on an annual basis of, what, of how we're doing, how much water we're saving. Mm -hmm. So right now we're saving about 56,000 acre feet a year since 1992, that was when we started. Yeah. And then our goal is to save about 100,000 acre feet a year by 2030. So we're a little over halfway there. Mm -hmm. And to get there, sustained, outreach, every, every pe people making these changes every year. Exactly. Changing out their toilets, washing machines, changing out their landscaping, put in uh, efficient irrigation equipment, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. That's our long-term program. Right. So, so those are permanent changes exactly. and they make a difference every year. Exactly. So then there's going to be times when we're in a drought or water shortage where we're going to need a lot of savings and a very short time frame. And so in order to get that savings, um, we do two things. One is, is is we rely on behavioral changes. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned earlier, people taking shorter showers, people reducing their irrigation, people reusing water that they normally wouldn't have reused, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, only washing their dishes in, or, or in the dishwasher for full loads and washing machines full loads. Um, so that's savings that, that you're gonna, you, you can get a lot of savings in a, very quickly, mm -hmm. but that savings seems to dissip dissipate over time. And, and, and you see the rebound effect where you know four or five years later, people are back to their old habits. You just can't keep that kind of yeah. thing up, especially when it starts raining and we're not in a drought anymore, and then people kind of return to their old ways. But even if they return to their old ways and have that efficient toilet and washer and landscape, they're still helping things out. Exactly, and that's the second thing we do is that we, we try to get as much behavioral changes as we can, but then we also use it to promote our long-term program so that we will get that long-term savings that will you know, uh, get us towards that long-term goal. And you have programs for businesses too. We do. We have programs for residential residents. We have programs for apartment buildings. We have por uh, programs for businesses, schools, schools, any any kind of establishment. We have a program. Even agriculture. We have programs for agriculture. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I'm a big fan of your programs. I think they're going to make a big difference and it's going to become very popular uh, this summer when we're in the middle of this drought. It's in the middle of. Uh, January right now and here we are without jackets on there's not well there's clouds in the sky but they're not doing anything so no, it's, very nice uh, <laughs> it's nice but it hurts how nice yes. it is well thank you for telling us about the programs and uh, good luck in the next few months thank you I'm here with Ashley Carter from our water conservation unit and you're a water conservation specialist uh, yeah and how, how long have you been at the district? You're fairly new. Um, yeah, actually just over a year. So I started off as an intern. I was there two and a half uh, years in, in, as an intern, but I've been full-time um, as of uh, mid-December. Yeah. Okay. What's the best part of uh, your job? Um, I have a background in landscaping, so it's really nice to do the landscape review program and still get to talk to people about their landscapes and talk to them about the plants and water conservation specifically in it. So it's, it's a lot of interaction with people, which I like. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, the house call program. You're, you're coordinating the WaterWise house call program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the WaterWise house call, it's a free home water survey. Um, helps evaluate water use in um, single family, multifamily um, units and helps identify where people can save water. Um, they'll help them you know, read their, their water bill, help them read their water meter to see if there's possibly a leak. Um, they'll look at different fixtures like their, you know, um, clothes washer, um, their water heater, different things like that to see if they can identify any potential leaks um, anywhere that they might be wasting water. Um, they'll also look at their, you know, their shower heads, their sink um, aerators, their bathroom aerators, kitchen bathroom to see if they can potentially switch out the aerators in those for ones that are lower flow. And uh, let's talk about outside. What what is the 
house call entail outside. Okay, so they'll they'll go through your landscape. They'll look at your um, they'll start you know they'll look at your irrigation timer and see where you could make adjustments to your timer. A lot of people over water they don't make seasonal adjustments, so they'll give you a um, a schedule that's more. Um, Customized to your yeah. home, yeah. Customized to your home. Um, they'll help you program it if you want, if you want, or they'll just leave you the schedule. Um, and then they'll go around and look for, look at your irrigation system and evaluate it. Um, they can check for leaks, um, check to see where you potentially have, you know, a traditional spray nozzle that's putting out way too much water, and say, hey, you know, you can replace that with a high efficiency nozzle and save water. Um, they can do a cash can test in your lawn area, which is essentially putting out. Um, putting out little containers kind of all over the lawn and they turn it on, test it, and check for efficiency. So you might have, you know, one area of your lawn that's getting a lot of water, another area that's not getting very much, but you're constantly overcompensating water too much to get that one dry spot. So they'll help you identify how to adjust your sprinkler system so that you're watering more efficiently. Um, they'll also at the same time get them um, pre-approval for the landscape rebate program so that's one thing also so they'll measure the landscape area they'll measure the lawn they'll note what type of irrigation system they have in place and they'll note if they have an irrigation controller on tight on site and all that information um, we use as far as a um, pre-approval for the landscape rebate program so you kind of all right and it's all free mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all free. Um, San Jose Water Customers is actually an equivalent program that San Jose Water Customers would go through, so it's a water watcher audit. Um, but otherwise, everybody else in the, in the county can go through the, the WaterWise House Call program. Okay, and on the on the landscape program, just to make, make sure everyone knows that you, you, to take advantage of the program, you need to first go through that process of yeah. getting a pre-inspection and filling an application. Tell us about the process. Um, it's essentially a three-step process so it's the pre-inspection and then the application approval and then a final post inspection um, so the pre-inspection like I said they'll th we need to be able to come out and verify what you have existing because it, it's all upgrades so you need to have existing equipment in place existing controller or if you're doing if you're removing a lawn we have to be able to measure your living you know green lawn at that time um, once we get that we'll give you an application packet and in that you essentially just kind of you know fill out your customer information um, let us know essentially what you're doing for your project um, it doesn't have to be extremely detailed if you're you know uh, switching out 50 nozzles you know kind of right in there you know we're removing 50 nozzles but just some sort of an idea so we can look at it and say okay you know what this meets our criteria mm -hmm. and then we'll once we have all that in we can approve um, your your application and you have 90 days basically to complete your project mm -hmm. well it's uh, with the weather we've been having and the drought that the governor declared, it seems like uh, your program is going to become more and more popular over the next few months. So uh, I hope you're ready to expand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've been pretty busy. We um, we increased the rebate amount. So it's a yeah. dollar per square foot now instead of 75 cents per square foot. And we actually just um, removed the maximum rebate amount so people can convert more. Um, it used to be a limit on it. And now we've kind of removed that because more and more people are contacting us and we're wanting to remove you know, more than residential sites, like 2,000 square feet. They want to remove more than that, which is which is great, and we'll work with them to do that. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you very much, Ashley. It's a great program, one of our most popular programs, and we hope uh, people will consider taking advantage of the Landscape Rebate Program and get a WaterWise house call. Great. Thanks. So we're here with Karen Coppett, one of our water conservation specialist at the Water District, mm -hmm. and we're at your house. Right. And we're at your house to show you show folks what a WaterWise house call actually looks like, and you're going to uh, let us uh, use your house today. Exactly, exactly. And and we want to invite people to sign up for this free WaterWise house call program. It's easy to do. The technician will come out to your home by appointment and look at your water use indoors and out. And that's what we're going to do. And th this house is new. You've only lived here a short, short time, so any, uh -huh. any water wasting that we might find is certainly not your doing. It was left here, you found, it was like that when you found it, right? That's the story that we're sticking okay, with, yes. Okay, great. And one of the things you're gonna do is really exciting. Uh, if we can pan a little bit, show what we have here. This is a lawn in the front yard. And what are you gonna do with this lawn? We are taking out the lawn and we are taking advantage of our landscape conversion rebate. Mm -hmm. We are gonna take it out and put in beautiful, efficient landscaping. It's gonna look great. I'm really excited. We're gonna do a little dry creek sort of meandering <laughs> through it and lots of beautiful plants that will be beneficial to insects and butterflies and birds. And I'm so excited because quite frankly, mowing the lawn every week, not exactly my thing. 
Yeah, and, and I'm looking down your street and I'm thinking, I'm seeing a lot of candidates yes. up and down yes. the street. I hope your neighbors will appreciate this beautification process, project and will uh, Be think about doing the same. Yeah. yeah, that's what I hope too. Okay, and across the street too. Boy, yeah, there's one. There's, there's, a, there's one over there that looks yeah, like it's done a good a job. Yeah, she does a great job. That's one of our neighbors who has made a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, environment for birds and butterflies and insects. It's just great. It looks now, beautiful. It looks a lot more interesting than, frankly, just the lawn in front. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, we're a little biased. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have our WaterWise house call technician here, Drew, and let's go talk to Drew. He's going to walk us through some of the basics of uh, the house call program. So, Drew, thank you for being here this morning. Hi, thanks for having me. And you're, you're with uh, Conservision, which actually operates the program for us, the Water District. Correct. And uh, so, how do we start? What, do you, what are we doing here in the front? So, usually we'll start in the front. Um, typically, we'll go with the homeowner and we'll ask you for your water bill. You just look at me. <laughs> so, yeah, I was used to yesterday. Um, so, usually we just ask you for your water bill, uh, the homeowner for the water bill, so we can see how much water you're currently using. And then we'll look at your water meter today to get a reading and then compare consumption say over the past month usage and also check for leaks okay. and then uh, then we'll go into the inside of the house and work through we'll check out the efficiency of your showers your faucets uh, your toilets and then also your washing machine and check your water heater make sure there's no leaks there okay so first we're gonna go to the water meter over here yeah we'll grab there So usually you can just pop uh, pop open the cover here and some of the each city is a little different with how their meters are and um, how their covers are but you can just pop that open sometimes it's a little cover mm -hmm. um, and then we'll look at the actual water meter itself couple spiders and yeah so yeah you want to be careful sometimes there's a uh, some some things crawling under there but uh, the main thing is when you're looking at the meter you'll have the um, 100 cubic feet with the white background there and right. so you can actually take the reading and then we'll write that down um, as the customer's today's reading and then you'll have your last reading from the water bill that you'll provide and then we can uh, I'll write this out and give you a copy of the, the consumption later uh, but basically we'll check for leaks so there's a little triangle sometimes or a blue wheel or dial and that will be a leak or flow indicator Whoa. so if that's uh, leaking uh, if, if something's uh, running or, or water's flowing, it'll start spinning. Wow. And uh, yeah, so it's very, very easy to read and also very um, good to check your house or whole house for leaks. Mm -hmm. and so it, lo yeah. it looks like good news. It looks like good news right now. So you don't see, I don't see any movement. And if there was, then we would definitely uh, check as many things as we can in the house. For okay, so Karen, you didn't leave your uh, shower water running. <laughs> yeah, you're not just Thank goodness. Running. Good, okay. Yeah. All right, good start. Well, let's uh, move on inside. Okay, so we're in Karen's lovely bathroom. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna check, Drew's gonna check the flow rate and the faucets, see if they're using more water than typical, and then we're gonna do the same with the shower. Yep. Let's do it. All right. So, yeah, so you got a handy dandy little bag here, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll, it has the little uh, lines of the gallons per minute, so you run the faucets on, fully on for five seconds, okay. and then it'll fill up to the line, and you'll see where we're at. So we'll try this one out. All right. Looks like we got an aerator in there. Some people don't have an aerator, and that's definitely a big waste, right, Karen? Right, and that's an inexpensive addition to a uh, faucet. Put a nice aerator on there, and uh, you can cut your water use by a significant amount. So we're looking for about one and a half gallons per minute, and it looks like it's just on that, so kind of about where this line is. So oh, okay. Are, the lowest it shows us is two, so I know usually about a little bit under there is about one and a half. So. This is what we would recommend or, or we would change out with our aerators. We have free free ones we give out. So if this is old or missing, I'll put it on for you if the customer wish, wishes and, and then you'll have save water. All right, and Karen. And there's no charge at all. So far, so good. We're doing good. All right, let's go to the shower. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll check the shower next. Looks like a low flow shower head, right, Karen? Yeah, you can yeah, usually tell when things are on uh, lower flow. Just, you, you can just tell just, well, at least like by experience. But, uh, <laughs> Proof. We've got the proof the so you're just counting five seconds in your head there? Yeah. You can, uh, sometimes you can, if I had a partner, I would have, use a stopwatch, but I have a 
pretty good in my head. So this one looks like it's just about two gallons per minute. So that's where we also recommend our uh, showers mm -hmm. to be, to be a more of a water saving. Typically, um, most of the new showers will be two and a half gallons per minute in the stores. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're in the store buying one, you can look for a lower flow rate, so two or one and a half. Uh, we provide the two gallon per minutes, and it also has a stop start switch. So if you want to save water while you're so um, lathering up, you can even save more. All right. Well, I think your bathroom's looking good. Thanks. So let's move on. All right. <laughs> so we want to talk about toilets a little bit in another bathroom at Karen's house. This is obviously a really modern toilet, fairly low That's flow. Right. Not the high, not the most low flow, right? But there's even even better. So one is it's high efficiency. So it looks like oh, it's a 1.28 on the bottom there. So high efficiency. And now they're going even lower yeah. with even more high efficiency. I don't know what they're calling them, but uh -huh. even a gallon or less uh -huh. per flush. Yeah. Uh, and so that's really cutting your, your water use down yeah. from a three and a half or, or higher gallon per flush. And so great. During, so during a house call, you would check for leaks by putting yeah, so, a dye. Yeah. So we'll, we'll take off the top here and then sometimes you'll get the dates of the old toilets or just oh. see how it's working. And then also, um, I'll listen to here if I hear this float or fill valve. If you hear that filling while it's just sitting there, then you usually can tell you have a leak. Yeah. And the flapper or the seal around there is bad. Um, so definitely for homeowners, uh, just listen to hear if your toilet's running, making noise, you know it's probably leaking. Mm -hmm. So that's really, it's the easiest thing, but you can also use the dye. So you just put this in the tank here and it'll, it'll dissolve. Mm -hmm. So it's a little blue pill yeah, that so just a little, a little puts some ink in the water. Toxic. It's fine. And then it just sits in there. And then you'll wait to see if it shows up in the bottom, um, in the bottom bowl. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then you know it's not leaking. If it does, then you know you, you have a leak somewhere. And you so. carry with you some flappers for a typical toilet? Yeah, typical toilet. This one, it, it wouldn't work on. It's a larger flapper size. Mm -hmm. We have them for most of the, most of the toilets um, from probably 2005 before. The new designs are larger now. Yeah. So. But we do carry them for most toilets, it'll fit, so just and in case. If you don't have a toilet like this, if you have one of those old ones, three and a half gallons, even more, or whatever, yeah, even more. you can look at our rebate program. We will actually help you get, get one of these good high efficiency mm -hmm. toilets. And they actually flush very nice, the new designs on most of them are even better yeah, than the old yeah. ones. So right. I They're, recommend them. <laughs> previously people were concerned about the efficiency or effectiveness of the toilet, but these ones work really well. Yeah, you don't have to flush twice for the new designs, so. All right. So we're here in the laundry room here, and we you have also a, a high, looks like you got a high efficient uh, high efficiency uh, washer. Well, it's washer, uh huh, exactly. And this isn't just uh, energy efficient; it's also water efficient. And although it's a top loader, some top loader models qualify for a rebate. Most high efficiency clothes washers, though, are front loaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So and you'll notice on your old um, older or, or not as efficient washers, you'll have the top loader style usually, and it has the um, <clears throat> The uh, agitator in the middle, yeah. so it'll and it, you'll fill up that whole water basin pretty much. Mm -hmm. So these newer style will will wash in a little bit different manner and not fill up all the way, mm -hmm. um, but still get your clothes clean. So, or the front loader style, which a lot of people go to with the rebates. And uh, yeah, remind me how much of a rebate is uh, are people eligible for in our county? Um, so now I, the one I recently saw was um, it's gone down through PG&E fifty dollars, and then if you buy the most energy efficient, it's a uh, hundred and. 200. Is it 200 now? Yeah, it's all know, it's up, up to 200, which is amazing. So, yeah, so if you get the most the most efficient, then up to 200. Yeah. Um, and a little bit less efficient, you still get a rebate, just not quite as much. So. Right, exactly. So there's one thing that we could recommend for you, Karen. Yes, there is. <laughs> and that is yeah. that this, this water, although it's not using much, we uh -huh. could actually uh, offer you a rebate to install a gray water system where the the, the water used water from this washer could be diverted into your yard into our yard yeah it's the gray water laundry landscape program we offer a 100 dollars rebate mm -hmm. for it and you it's uh it's a pretty cool thing and it's actually been around for a little while we just started the rebate program mm -hmm. and my washer is in a good spot because it's near uh uh, the outside wall mm -hmm. so all we'd have to do is direct the water um, and you have a switch so if you're washing something that's really you know dirty. really particularly dirty you want to send it down uh, to uh, the sanitary sewer mm -hmm. but otherwise you just have it go out into your garden and water your um, your plants out there mm -hmm. and it's a really neat program okay. and I know we've got a lot of uh requirements or guidelines on yes. our website so don't just rush out and do it contact us first and get 
fill out the application. That's exactly right. You can either call our hotline or go to valleywater.org and all the details are there. All right. Okay, let's go outside. Let's right. see what you can do out there. It's more probably the inside. Right, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Cool. So does your controller have drip over here yeah. on these other mm -hmm. plants? So it does. You want to turn those up? Okay, we're out in the backyard and we're looking at the landscaping controller. So what do you what do you do with the controller, Drew? So the irrigation controller, will, um, I'll start here by looking at it, see if it's on or off right now. So it's in the auto run position. Mm -hmm. And then the, the main thing for these, which does create a lot of problems in regards to water consumption, high water consumption, mm -hmm. is the irrigation controller um, and also leaks too while it's running. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is to check the date, um, all the settings. So the when the irrigation timer turns on, the start time. Mm -hmm. So you want to see how many start times there are and what time it's running. And I can adjust that for you or for the customer if they wish mm -hmm. to change the time if it's running at night or if it's running in the early morning. And typically we'll recommend as early morning as possible, close to the middle of the night to reduce evaporation and get your most um, efficient watering mm -hmm. without wind as well. Yeah. Um, so then we'll also look at how many minutes each zone or station is running. So mm -hmm. if you have lawn, if you have some low water use plants or maybe flowers and see how, much, how many minutes those are running and I'll note that down. And then the next thing is how often the timer is running. Mm -hmm. So this one is running just three days a week right now. And so, um, and that's usually probably a, maybe a spring setting or fall setting depending on the area you live. Mm -hmm. Some people might do only once or twice depending on the plants, so. And normally, we're, we're doing this in January, normally yeah. you'd be able to turn that yeah, completely I usually off. Say, I usually say here, maybe I'll adjust it for you for upcoming spring and, I'll, and just leave it off because mm -hmm. it's raining. Mm -hmm. But it's been a weird, uh, obviously the drought this, this season, so. It, you can maybe let it run just maybe once or twice a week if you feel like plants or lawn needs it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can try to keep it off as much as possible. Yeah. But and so, then, yeah. So, what's the verdict for Karen? Do you think we're uh... actually you could turn it off because yeah. I'm replacing my lawn. Yeah, so. let's not water that lawn anymore. <laughs> yeah. So at the same time, yeah, she's not going to need to water. So usually, we can turn that off or maybe leave a little. You can always turn off certain sections if you don't want to water that section or if I find a broken. The other thing I'll do is turn on the irrigation from the timer and we'll look at the each zone visually to see how everything's working mm -hmm. and if there's a leak. And if there is a leak, I'll turn it off for them for the time being until it's fixed if they wish. Um, so that's another thing we can do as well, just to check your irrigation system if you don't know how to. Mm -hmm. So so that's probably one of the most valuable things that you do is to leave the resident with a watering schedule that, mm. that will work for them. Yeah, exactly. So then we'll leave you a, a watering schedule, how we would recommend it. Mm -hmm. And obviously I'll ask everyone first, you know, some people want to water more. Some people are happy with cutting back their watering a lot more than it was set mm -hmm. currently. So um, I'll make sure that everyone, you know, they're, they're satisfied with that as well. Do you find that most people are watering more than they really need to? I think so. It's a little bit skewed because we do get a lot of calls in the summer for high water bills, mm -hmm. and I find that someone has turned up the the timing and days, mm -hmm. you know, every day for 20 minutes, and that's just you know overkill for lots of things, mm -hmm. depending on the area. But um, so I do I do find that quite a bit actually for for this um, this house call mm -hmm. program is, is a lot of overwatering. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I think we uh, we've covered the the main yeah. things about the the house calls. Yeah. So thank you, Drew, for showing us around. Thank you for allowing us into your home. And I think you scored an A plus. <laughs> Good job. <Woo>! Woo! <laughs> okay. Well, thank you both. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. So there you go. I hope you found that helpful to hear about our water conservation programs and some tips that uh, you can take to heart and uh, help us to get through this drought. Uh, if you can connect with us through Facebook or Twitter. We'll be giving you more tips as the spring and summer goes along. And if you can give us any feedback on the people behind your water series about what topics you'd like to hear us talk about in the future, we'd really love to hear from you. So go to www.valleywater.org or save20gallons.org to find out more about water conservation and how you can help. Thank you for watching.